We have no fun on this broadcast. Never. <coughs> okay, listen. Very serious terms. We've we've covered a lot of bases uh, and finance. Very important to all of us. Listen to this. American credit card debt is at an all-time mm. high, hitting more than a trillion dollars. Wow. With a T. Wow. Yes. Yeah. According to Ramsey Research, nearly 60% of Americans worry about money every single day. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm one of them. We all are. Yeah. Yeah. 46% lose sleep over it. Yep. 40% have zero money saved for retirement wow. and when it comes to credit cards 25 percent rely on credit cards uh, to make ends meet we have successfully depressed each well, and every yeah, one of you really. and ourselves i mean sometimes you wake up in the, the night and you're like oh my gosh hold on let me check my bank account that's right and then you can't go back to sleep and right and sleep. then you bring out a calculator and that's where our next guest comes in okay george camel is a personal finance expert here to help people who are feeling hopeless with their finance mm -hmm. okay so with his new book breaking free from broke and he is joining us now. So George, great to see you this morning. This is such a talker, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess for you and first and foremost, you're the expert. How'd you get started and when did you become the expert? Well, before I was the expert, I was the broke guy. Okay. I was the broke millennial <laughs> who graduated from college with a bunch of student loan debt, 36 grand, living off credit cards, trying to build my credit score and earn the rewards and get the free flights. And I woke up going, this can't be it. This can't right. be the American dream. Yeah. America's become land of the free, home of the broke, if you saw those That's stats. Right. Yeah. And it's not okay with me. And so over a decade of working this plan, these Ramsey baby steps, getting out of debt mm -hmm. in 18 months and meet my wife, buying a home, paying off the house early, and now becoming a net worth millionaire, I want to shout from the rooftops, if it's possible for a first generation American with immigrant parents, it's possible for anyone out there. You bought a house and paid it off how quickly? In 26 months, okay. and we did it without a credit score. What are we doing wrong? Everything, apparently. We should, well, we should you, become you guys live in New York City. It's a different life It's a, life different, it's a different life, but I think you're going to give us some helpful tools that yes. we can use to adapt. Because, mm -hmm. yes, I think living in New York, you kind of play by a different set of rules. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different set of thing. But something that I think is true across the board, no matter where you live or what your income is, a lot of the conversation about money, at least for me, is very toxic. Mm -hmm. It's very, like, there's shame surrounding it. It's um, You feel bad. Like, I know I'm going to be 50, and I'm only just now upping my my financial IQ and so mm. I spent a, a year being like what were you doing in your 20s like you should have done this earlier ago so can you unpack that for us a yeah little bit? there's there is so much baggage when it comes to money and a lot of it is how we grew up or we saw how our parents handled money we have mm. our own mistakes we feel like we're not keeping up with where our friends are at and all of that just leads to this shame and guilt and so I want mm. to free you from that the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago the next best time is today so I love you. whether you're 20 or 50 if you're starting to take finances seriously, I'm just proud of you and I want to give you a hug and say, way to go. D do it. There we go. There you go. You're doing great. You're there doing you great. You're doing great, sweetie. Thank so you. Th Thank this you. is a big thing people need to start paying attention yeah. to and going, you probably make more money as you get older. Right. And so it's not too late to start investing for retirement. It's not too late to free yourself from the shackles of debt, which is what the book is about. I'm right. trying to show people a different way to handle money that involves zero debt. Right, right. but how, does it get, how do you get there, right? Because I'm always on the phone with her. We're talking about money. <laughs> She's preparing for college. I'm preparing for the future. I'm telling him, get your 529. Yes. Five, all this stuff, right? But every time you make more money, you spend more money somehow, right? It's That's like called lifestyle money. creep. Okay. But what is it called? Lifestyle creep. You make more, you spend more. Mm -hmm. And so the key is, can you continue living like a broke college student even when you start making some good money so mm. that you have margin in your life? But most people, what they do is they graduate college and they go, well, I got to get a nicer car. So they get a $600 car payment. Now we got to get a house because renting is a waste of money and you can't do that. That's a myth. That's a huge myth. And so we get these young people. Why are you people. looking at me? I drive a Maserati. Uh, a <laughs> Maserati. I like that. I have a Mazda. He, he had us in the first half. Yeah, exactly. that's exactly. good. Exactly. But you, start, you look up and you have all these payments around right. you, and then you're wondering why inflation is keeping you broke. It's not inflation. It's your debt payments. You right. free mm -hmm. up those debt payments. Now you have money to breathe and invest. Okay. You have, uh, we could talk for forever, but let's get to the next thing. What are some money myths that you want to debunk? Um, oh renting, is a, renting is a waste of money. Yep. I feel for the young people. This is what I hear all the time as I co-host the Ramsey Show with Dave Ramsey. Yeah. People call in and they say, should I buy a house because renting is a waste of money? And I go, who told you that? Right. Well, society, right. my parents, my friends. It's the American friends. dream. Yeah. It's the American home, dream. Right. Well, well, here's what's happening is people have a car payment. They still have their student loans. They're living off credit cards. And now we're going to add the expensive lifestyle of home ownership on right. top of mm. that with a mortgage that they really can't afford. And closing costs and all the rest. And maintenance and, and, and repairs. Right. And so then they go take out a 401k loan because they can't afford it or they take out a HELOC right. so that they can get the home renovation done. Okay. And you look up and you're $100,000 in debt with just consumer debt wondering this can't be right. it. And then you don't even have any enough, enough money to 
buy furniture. No, you're house poor. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what happens. So right. I want to tell people just pause. Renting is buying patience. It's very wise. Get out of debt, buying get patience. an emergency fund, then save up a good down payment. That's how you know you're ready. Okay. So, okay, let's talk about credit cards for yeah. a second, right? Because you have, you have eight archetypes for how and why people oh. use credit cards. You're going to go through four. Five. Yeah, so <clears throat> I've heard all the reasons why no one will ditch the credit card. And mm. I've lived without a credit card rewards. for a decade now. Hmm. And I've heard it all. The rewards are the big one. I call mm. this one the rewards redeemer, right? Well, I got to get my free flights and my cash back. Mm. Well, the credit card companies are smarter than you. They have big <laughs> buildings downtown, right? They're sponsoring the Taylor Swift tour. Mm. We can't afford right. tickets mm. to the Taylor Swift mm. tour. Well, this is a problem. Case in point. Right? And so right. what they're doing is they're tricking our brain psychologically to think in terms of points. What does 25,000 points get you? Well, that's like a $300 flight right. that you spent $25,000 mm. to get. Okay, this, fine. The math is not mathing here. The math ain't mathing. 2% rewards at the risk of 22% APR. Okay. Not worth it. Okay. So uh, you have the eight character archetypes. Walk us through one of them is called the perfect spender. Oh, we hear this one all the time. Well, George, I spend perfectly. I spend exactly like I would if I had cash. I never pay a dime in interest. Mm. How many of us have heard that or said that? Yes. And here's the thing, research shows, every single study shows you spend more when you swipe that plastic. When it's someone else's money that you get to pay back later, mm. you're just tempted to spend more. And MIT research shows that. It hits the accelerator on the gas and hits the brake for your brain to go, you know what, yeah. I'm gonna go into spending overload. Yeah. Have you done attacked. this? I, I feel thought there was guilt there. I feel attacked. <laughs> okay. I feel attacked. Fraud protector. You need protector. to hug after this Fraud too. protector. Oh, the fraud protector. This is the person who says, well, it's for safety to use my credit card mm. because it's not my money on the line. But a lot of people don't know, if you have a Visa or MasterCard logo on your debit card, you're covered by yeah. their zero liability policy. Yeah. So no fear with the debit card. Mm -hmm. You're covered under the same protections. Rewards redeemer. That's He's the big one. Oh, the yeah, you did that. Yeah, I, yeah, do, I everyone, know. I well, have the, the one. 90 I only use of cards are store. spent on rewards. Yeah. That's what people spend their, uh, swipe the card for is to get those measly rewards. We're almost out of I time. Know. Here's the thing, right? So a lot of people are living in debt. What's the one thing you say to do before you start the savings account. Yes. Oh, you when gotta have a paradigm first. shift. We, yeah. we always, we're way too optimistic about the risk of going into debt. We think that won't be me. Mm. And we're way too pessimistic about our ability to get out. And so you have to have this paradigm shift that I'm the kind of person who's going to live debt free yep. and take the steps to get there. So the debt snowball method is the best method to get out of debt. It's what I did. Hmm. Smallest balance to largest balance, attack the little one with a vengeance, make minimum payments on the rest, and the snowball starts to roll. You free up a payment faster, you get the psychological mm -hmm. win, you get motivated, and that's how millions have followed the Ramsey plan to become debt free. We're gonna have a group hug. Are we gonna do this? Mm -hmm. This We're is like group it. therapy, We're guys. Doing. We did it. <laughs> we broke free from broke. What an honor. George, George thank this you. This is so, so fun. Much.